morning. So we're all connected to Cisco's WebEx by computer, except Eric, who works at Cisco, who obviously doesn't own a computer. <laughs> well, um, reason being is I have this great headset that, well, I could attach it to the computer. It just sounds so nice. I can't get myself weaned off of it. But I am attached by computer, but uh, also by headset. And is your phone attached? Is it a VoIP phone? It is a VoIP phone. All right. Well, then I'll forgive you for... <laughs> I just think it's funny, you know, to be connected by computer and then dial in over the PSTN to get to the audio, which is like, in some ways, the easiest, should be the easiest part for the internet to handle the audio. But anyway. <clears throat> no, it's all good. It's all good. I... Uh... Once you get your audio set up so it's a single click and uh, everything just delivers it, it's it's hard to hard to go back. Go back. Also, yeah. one thing is uh, is the independence of the audio uh, on the computer. It, it it does have some advantages. Yeah. So one of the curious things I think that Chrome has gotten into putting a big a big lock, like a big kernel lock, um, into the browser because when I have a WebRTC running of some kind. Um, I will notice that my browser completely locks up. I can't switch tabs. I can't even like raise lower windows on it, stuff like this. And yet the mm -hmm. audio continues to go through. Yep, this is another reason, uh, having the independence of your system, yep. And and it will suddenly, it'll suddenly unlock and everything will redraw and all the commands that I had typed will suddenly execute. And it could take like three or four minutes. And I'm like, what is, something's taken the lock and forgotten about it clearly. But so it's a bit weird to think that browsers are now more complicated than kernels. Um, <laughs> but there you go. No, these uh, are all reasons. Are the other reason the more... Linux. Go ahead. go ahead. No, no, it's okay. I was just going to get into internals of WebEx, but it's not important. <laughs> okay. Uh, Linux doesn't do as good job. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so I got a message from Lawrence that he may or may not make it, uh, but he's trying. Uh, I got a message from Hank this morning saying he would be here, but he's not yet. Um, uh, who else do we normally have is um, Ed, Med, and Monty, and um, so let's just give it another two minutes. Um, well, we're waiting. I have one thing just to, because I promised some stuff on layering, and I sent a message to Ned just a little while ago. I've been right working up text, and I de decided not to send something in until we had a discussion on it here. The thing that I'm building right now is closer to the definition of, of um, was it composite or combinations than the TCG definition of layering. And um, instead of de de creating a new term for what I'm doing, I'm trying to recreate text based on the um, combinations uh, and then maybe discuss what I'm trying to do as a group so that we're not getting it confused with the TCG definition of layering. Also, uh, Way is on the call too. Um, they're, they're, I'm trying to adopt the component uh, descriptions he has, such as a tester components. So instead of trying to create independent text, I'm trying to morph something rather than force it and trying to merge it into the document. That sounds wonderful. Uh, Hank says he says WebEx issues. There he comes. Siri is joining. We have another minute. So did you uh, want to open an issue on what you're working on so that we can remember that you're to bother you next week or something? Um, I could do that. Um, the text I have, again, I'm trying to make sure that it's seen as as mergeable rather than starting to be merged. So my take on it right now is that if I can leave the architecture document as simple as possible and adopt all the terms, that'd be good. So I think the more interesting thing would be if I can have text which is an example embodiment of the architecture using the architecture terms that might be more useful than uh, trying to send something in the architecture directly. I don't know 
didn't think I understood that, but I think I. Uh, what I I'm saying is that I'm trying to come up with an. Going. I understand where you're going. I just don't think I understand those words. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me put it this way. There's a specific combination which Dave has been articulating based on TEEP. This would be using the same words and another document that would be an embodiment of this architecture uh, using the terms to prove that the architecture can support different views of how the architecture could be embodied in a deployable uh, instance. So you're going to use our architecture terms in the TEEP working group's architecture document, which I thought already no. was... No, no it's a document. different architecture document, document because it's a different architecture. Some other place. Okay. I'm still confused. <laughs> All right. Um, if you want, I could share real briefly a view of the, uh, of the architecture diagram that I've been working on. And then um, you can see where it's not an exact match to TEEP. And then you get an idea of uh, of why it can't be the TEEP architecture. And the concept just, of layering it, is, of course, not specific. Cold. I don't want to derail use. everything here. So let's come back to that topic then. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Or you'll just make progress and you'll show it to us when it's appropriate. That, that, that's fine. Uh, however you guys want to handle it, I'm not trying to derail, but I do have examples that are ready to go. All right. Um, do we have sufficient quorum here? Yep, I think so. <laughs> As I said, Lawrence said he was going to try to make it, but he wasn't sure. Um, and there. Let's start with the composite updates way made. I don't know if everyone else has had a chance to read them. I did. I did. Do we need to walk through them? Do we have do you have comments? I had some comments on Friday. Way yeah, I had a bunch of comments. You, you do you want me to find your comments here, Dave? It's probably easiest to do it in the uh the uh, file view. File view. File changed. Uh, oh, that's interesting. It doesn't show my comments. Oh, um, it only shows some of them. Okay, interesting. That's because the, if the file gets revived, 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 uh, I can't say that word today. If the file goes through a revision, then the comments uh, wind up on the previous revision sometimes. Yeah, I guess I'm surprised because I entered the comments only about a half an hour ago. So that means uh, Wayne must have just pushed an update. No, because it says nine hours ago here. Huh, weird. Okay, then I don't know. All right, so you have comments. I have updated the three commits. Bigger than Dave's comments. Like in the last 20 minutes? No, uh, I have updated the three commits up, uh, later than Dave's comments. So right, maybe so you need happen. to check the commit. All right, so if we go back to the conversation, Maybe that will have them yeah. all. We can understand it. Dave Thaler reviewed 14 days ago. Hmm. Make sure you actually ago. got all my comments. Dave that I Thaler did. requested nine hours ago. Okay, yeah, maybe it was nine hours ago. Okay. Uh, I'll show two, few, uh, two uh, of Dave's comments that are still considered by GitHub. Uh, unresolved. All the other ones have to be opened if we want to look at them. Only two of them are still open. So this is marked outdated. Okay. And... Yeah, sorry. I, I I did my comments last night, so it was nine hours ago, and he did update it less than nine hours ago. So, okay, sorry. So there we go. So you want me to, if there's something that you want me to, to, you want to, these look like editorials, editorials. Yeah, I had a bunch of editorials, and then so a couple of uh, not editorials. There we go. What is there? Is that one of them? I was looking at stuff on my own screen here. Let me flip back to yours. Okay. Um, 
I'm looking at uh, the response. So if you look down at line 151, you see the word control is still there. And so uh, the, it is now in outdated. Yeah, this is. Oh, you're right. It is outdated. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but if you scroll up for a second, is that, is that one still say control there too? I just want to make sure it's all showing the outdated ones. Okay. I just wanted to know if there was some non. Right, that's what I'm looking for too, is to make sure there's no, some non editorial thing in the outdated. That some of us need to understand the rationale for changing so it. So that one, I want to see what the new wording is. The one that used to say NMS. Does it now just say there's only one main router that connects to the verifier? Yep. Okay, if that's the change, then all right, keep going. Okay, so this is the, I think, part of the main discussion here. Um, so in the diagram, it just shows a testers on the bottom, you know, lead a tester and sub a testers or whatever the other term is, and the evidence comes up. And so I expected the text to show, to, to, to meaning my interpretation of that diagram um, was that the lead tester would just collect all the evidence, uh, put it into some composite form without doing any verification and ship it up to the verifier, right? So there's no verification. I see now William was put in this verifying environment optional in the diagram, which I haven't seen before, uh, but uh, the little part in the uh, asterisks in the bottom wasn't there before. And so my interpretation before is what was in the evidence of composite a tester arrow that comes out the top, was just a collection of all the evidence from all the individual testers, and it would just ship them up in some bulk uh, combination form um, without any verification in the lead tester. Uh, that's what I understood, and that's what makes it made more sense to me. With the changes here, this is where I get lost. So, and of course, I haven't read the new text. So, okay, so let's jump to the new text just a moment here. Um, Hank, do you want to? Um, had some comment here. Do you want to jump into that part of the thread, or is it you going a different direction? Oh, it's actually I was try uh, from the I didn't dive into the uh, history, so that I'm highlighting that. So from the top of my head, I remember that that was initially in the when they had these two diagrams that were uh, difficult to compare. We had a verifier box inside the tester uh, tester, I think. Right, which I didn't understand then either. So, so this is basically the, and this is, I'm trying to, what I thought that meant, and this is my deduction from it, I put it into a comment here. So, um, so it's, it's a lot of um, uh, assumptions, but then uh, Wipen uh, addressed it with, uh, it's basically what he tried to say, <laughs> I think. So um, this is basically what I took from the diagram that is passed, and now it came back to life with the asterisk box inside the attester. I don't, so, so my resolve, my, my conclusion is that we have to agree, is this feasible or not? So uh, is, it, is it feasible to have a, uh, a tester role in the root attester hierarchy of a composite device in order to not convey all the evidence, but uh, offload some of the appraisal procedure to the attester itself by provisioning it with a, a local um, uh, isolated attester, assume it's probably on some supervisor board or something or main board, and then uh, uh, may let, let that component because it's powerful enough to be a partial verifier for subcomponents only, create attestation results. I have to follow my own thought here, and then put these attested results into evidence. I think that was what I assumed would have happened with the very first diagram. But I uh, and, and Raypen said, uh, yes, that is the, the idea. And my proposal is we should discuss this because I don't know if we want to have this detailed composition in the architecture or if this is basically the way how we want to do this. Thing. This recursive application of the verifier tester pattern. And so <clears throat> you might so as well call it a verifier. So I think I understood what Hank said. Uh, I'm going to repeat back what I think you said, Hank, because if so, I would be fine with the approach that you're saying. Um, you're saying if there's a verifier in the composite device, then that verifier generates attestation results, which are put into the composite evidence, right? The composite evidence includes attestation results. 
And you also said that the appraisal policy configured in the composite device um, was configured there the same way as stuff was configured into any other verifier, which has potentially no relationship whatsoever to the verifier that the composite device talks to. Exactly. And so if I understood you right, I would be fine with that type of discussion, but that's not what the text of the di diagram shows right now. But you're probably right. It probably is closer to the original uh, one of the two before, which I don't remember anymore. But uh, what you described sounds uh, reasonable to me. So is that a different pattern than the other patterns uh, that, were, that were described? There are some hybrid no. <clears throat> uh, background and... I don't think it's a different pattern. I think it is another one of the uh, ways to combine patterns, just like the one example that shows that, that uh, say, you know, T plus something else uses where you have an example of, you know, background and an example of um, uh, passport in the same overall topology and, and in different places. I think it's another case like that because here, when you put attestation results into composite evidence, Okay, using those that terminology, then the verifier in the diagram right now, right, not the one in the composite device, but the verifier that receives the composite evidence is a relying party with respect to the attestation results that were inside. Right. <clears throat> so do we need do we do we need to go through an example that's that uh, you know busy or is it obvious? Can we assert that? These things can be composed in lots of different ways, and I think that's a great question. I don't have a strong opinion either way. What do you think? There's something what different was the word that was you that know, you used about you when you put the attestation results into the evidence. You had a word. You had it. It was it wasn't composite. It, it was. Are you asking me? Dave, yeah, you, you when uh, you used the explanation, you had a word that I was just trying to capture here. Um, I will repeat. I was just trying to articulate exactly what Hank said, or at least what I understood Hank said, hoping that he was good. He said yes, which he did. Uh, well, I'm trying I, to write it down because I've heard it three times different ways. Um, uh, uh, I said that you put the uh, local attestation results into the composite evidence. The composite evidence. That's the one. It, I just because that is the term that William has in the diagram. It's called, I think, if I remember right, that uh, the label composite right. evidence. So, so you are, I think, uh, saying what I think I spaced out when, and um, you're saying is that that local verifier might not be local. It might actually be communicating with a different verifier elsewhere, receiving attestation results, and then including them uh, in in its thing. And that, in fact, you said was almost the TEEP use case. As well. I didn't say that. That was somebody else. Okay. I don't know whether I agree with that or not, but I'm just saying that that, well, the that fact that you the happened. fact that you go to to verifier A, collect that testation results, include that into composite evidence to verifier B. Okay, yep. In order to do something, and that that's one of the ways that this composite device could work, where it doesn't actually have a local verifier. It's just that the the verifier role appears to verifier two, the second one the, in the diagram to be coming from within the device when in, in fact there's no idea where exactly it is. Uh, the okay, device, that's be, that's an interesting works. point that I had not considered. So, so there's not a lot of difference between whether the local verifier creates the, that local verifier creates its own attestation or whether it gets the, uh, a signature from elsewhere. What matters is that it, it originates it um, from within, from the point of view of the next verifier. That, that does complicate, it. what you said I think is true, but it does complicate the picture, if you were to draw that in the picture a little bit more. And the, the reason I say that is because um, that means that the composite device has a relying party in it, right? Because the only way to get the attestation results is either to create them or to receive them as a relying party. And if you're saying if the, lead verifier is not inside the composite device, which is how I and Hank were describing the possibility. But if the local, if the 
if the verifying environment optional in the center there is not physically inside the composite device, but if that one is itself remote, which is what I think you were saying, uh, Michael, then that means you need a relying party inside there to get those attestation results back for the purpose of putting them in the composite um, uh, evidence. I think that if you had a, re if you were doing all of the work, uh, if you were doing all of the work internally, mm -hmm. you would, that, that re verifying environment would itself also be a relying party anyway, because we've already said that's the, if you, if you had all the knowledge. Uh, uh, I don't think that's necessarily true. That may or may not be true. Okay. Uh, I would say the, the relying party is also the, an attester. So, for example, uh, if you are using it for purpose of uh, authenticated boot, um, then your authenticated boot in that sense might be a relying party because you're choosing whether to accept the attestation results and continue booting, for example. But if you are going to do the same thing regardless uh, until you've sent off the composite evidence off to the verifier and only do something after that point, then, of course, then you're not a relying party. You're just a verifier because you're uh, generating a blob of stuff and shipping it off box. I got quiet. Am I still on? Yeah, sorry. I was talking to mute. Okay. Um. <clears throat> So what you describe is fine. I'm saying it complicates the picture only because it introduces an extra box because there's still a box inside, which would be a relying party, and then there's another verifier that's outside. But, but I agree with your point that is uh, possible. So I'm just happy to put to abstract that all into verifying environment, and if there's a verifying environment that can create attestations, uh, that they would be packaged into the composite evidence. Um, and that I don't really care how they get from this diagram's point of view. I don't really care whether they they are in that diagram. If I were to somehow draw it, I would want to exploit another dimension and you know, <laughs> pull it out of the uh, pull it into another dimension, so we don't have to look at it quite all the time. But um, but I just don't see that. I don't. I don't think we need to complicate the diagram with that. I think the important part is that we can have either. Uh, Composite evidence, sorry, uh, evidence from from multiple devices, or we can have evidence that also includes uh, uh, attestations. Yeah, so I think you're 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 arguing that we deal with it in the text, not in the picture. Yeah, and then it's just trying to figure out what's the right label inside the asterisk box. Is verifying environment the envir optional? Is that the right label, or is there a better label we can come up with? But I am also fine dealing with it in the text. Um, I just don't know, for example, if it is in the category of, uh, I'm trying to figure out if there's some label that would be able to remove the label um, optional and maybe even verifying and call it something else uh, and then deal with it in the text. So if, okay, if, there's a, if there's a verifier and our line implies that there is policy feeding both of those. And I, I, I think it makes sense to <clears throat> to say that that you know, the the relationship of the of the roles can be applied in you know in in, in the, uh, this particular way. It places some <clears throat> you know requirements on the on the composite environment to 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 facilitate you know that the complexity. I, but I don't think it makes sense to. To um, you know, hide the complexity just so that the diagrams are simple. I don't know that we really need to have this really complex diagram in the architecture document either. But what's more important is is there is is there a composite evidence structure that we need to define? And if so, then the architecture should say something about it. I think that's the the key take home of this of this diagram is that. We need to have a, a structure for composite. Uh, 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 I keep saying composite evidence, but um, I'm not sure that's the word you kept using. No, it was the word that I kept using, but it actually says evidence of composite attester. So yeah, uh, so that that's why looking at it now confuses me. Uh, what term? And I like composite evidence too. 
Um, so I think that we have to have, I think that the coming out of this diagram is a requirement for composite evidence. Um, Oh, I have an opinion then, sorry to interrupt, uh, because we are saying now that attestation results composed into a bundle and then used as evidence are composite evidence. What's about the bulk evidence that's just concatenated and maybe even just for fun and giggle signed again? That's not attestation results and it's also somehow a composite evidence. Are we uh, not? Well, they're, they're, those are... and that's the case that I thought that the picture was originally. Yeah. Those are, yeah, those, but... are few, those are, those are, those are, uh, so uh, I would say you have this. You have an array of of things that comes from places, and <laughs> sometimes you put, and sometimes it's puts it's evidence, okay, and sometimes it's in, it's it's attestation results, and I don't see that as being uh, complicated inherently for our structure to to hold. Uh, I agree, Michael. Uh, uh, it, it 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 may be surprising to a verifier that's not expecting it, in which case it's a fail, but. Um, the, the I don't see that the the container is that complicated, and and I think that that the case of a chassis booting with some line cards, it's going to be a set of of evidence, and that's it. In the case of a robot booting up, okay, like a manufacturing robot, then the individual components of the robot, say the welder, may be a completely separate thing. And it may have a completely separate manufacturer and a and a, and a totally separate uh, attestation result, right? I agree with what uh, you just said, Michael. Um, I think format wise, right? Both the evidence and attestation results are just sets of uh, claims that are then signed, right? And so, if you were to just look at a blob of stuff inside the evidence of composite tester and it had a signed claim set in there, then um, if just parsing the bits and you know Wireshark or something, it might be indistinguishable between an attestation result and an evidence if you coded it that way, right? And so here it's just a label on a diagram to to, to describe the roles, um, but I don't think there's necessarily a conflict in there, which I think is the same thing you were saying. Um, yeah, so watching what you're typing here, um, maybe I'll throw out, uh, if we can start throwing out straw man labels, um, is, is maybe something about, because uh, it collects the claims from the sub-attesters, and so I don't know if it's a, something that uses the term collect or collector or collecting as one of the words, claims collector. <laughs> <laughs> Or repo man, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> uh, do you, optional claims collector or just a claims collector? It's because it. Uh, I think you can call it non-optional with the if we were to use this term, because um, it's always collecting claims from the from the tester B and C. What it does with them varies, right? Ah, okay. Right, whether it translates them into attestation results or whether it just includes them directly, it's still clicking the claims. So, uh, it's collecting with, claims with to be this, put into the composite evidence or whatever. With this change, which I think is relatively easy, uh, would we, would we, are we ready to just accept the rest of the text in the diagram? William, can you point out where the new text is that talk, that, that you updated? Um, for that verifying environment line. Verifying environment. Yeah, I can, I can update that. I'm just saying, can we look at the paragraph right now that might have to be updated to see, hey, do we want to merge and then update, or is it, I think, which is what Michael is saying, can we merge and then do another one in a separate course? I just, I want to read it all the beginning to end. Okay. I haven't read this version yet since. All right, that's fine. And, and probably you haven't either, Dave, due to time zones, so. Correct. And you know, we actually have collecting the claims already here. Exactly. Uh, 
Um, I don't see the line no burst. Could, um, over. Okay. All right. Um, it, I'm wondering if in line 145, where it says prove its trustworthiness, I wonder if we can change prove to assert. <clears throat> this is the attester speaking to the verifier. It generates evidence from the claims to prove its trustworthiness. And I think proof might be too mathematically strong and assert is probably a better term. Not not a big deal either way. I'm saying that's kind of a, a nit, but I think it would be a better word. Yeah, <clears throat> I think the subtle difference is um, <clears throat> a proof is an assertion that has a signature in the simplest case. A proof is something that nobody can deny, and here the receiver can apply its own policy uh, as to whether it believes it or not. So, for example, if it doesn't believe your signature, it's not. And so, technically, it's not a proof, per se, in the mathematical sense. Do we have a definition of assert that requires... No, I was just trying to use a word than term. Just making a statement with no attribution to the asserter? We don't have a formal term. I was trying to find a layman's term that uh, does not need definition. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if it matters, but that tends to be. What about use uh, something like uh, use to verify? Or verifiable claims, I don't know. Um, or you can just delete the phrase to prove its trustworthiness and just say it generates evidence in the claims. That's probably better. Yeah, that's okay. And also the, the, the term here is appraise, I think, but uh, we just removed all that, uh, so it doesn't matter anymore. The receiver does the appraisal. This is what the sender does. That's oh, I'm I sorry. Just to, yeah, remove to prove its trustworthiness, I think it's, it reads fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, keep going, thanks. going to become is that main supposed to become lead lead slot that's a fair question i can't answer that we had lead attesters some are lead attesters Uh, well, I understand that this is all about this is saying this is about uh, routers, of course. It's that's that's the premise, I think. Um, As an example, you could do the same thing for, say, a car. Yeah, but yeah, okay. So it, it, inside the example slot is fine, I guess. Primary, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, the the thing is uh, that this is uh, this. Uh, are we highlighting this as an, enough as an example? Because I think we are never using, have never used a, a, such a detailed example before. And 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 this is actually uh, two examples, right? Because line one fifty three starts another example. Oh yeah, right. It's multi. Well, actually, I would say up to this point, it's rather abstract. And then we actually say a multi a single carrier grade router because oh no yeah. carrier grade router okay so 142 is for example a carrier yeah, grade router exactly. yeah, 153 yeah. another example is a multi chassis router oh that's okay these in multiple slots okay i'm i'm okay with main slot because because we're talking about the chassis now not the not yeah. the role and then the role the main slot is defined as the lead tester multi chassis mm -hmm. router composed multiple single carrier routers
only change I, I think uh, is claims collector. Sorry, what? Can you scroll up? I just realized something else. Uh, uh, before you go on, I'm looking at the line that is uh, 169 through 171. I'm looking at the arrow that comes down out of the verifier. Yes. Endorsements and appraisal policy for evidence of attesters. I think I would delete that line. This entire line here? Yes. Because if there is no verifying environment on the bottom, then there is, of course, no such line. And if there is a verifying environment on the bottom, the endorsements and appraisal policy may not come from the verifier. They could come from some other completely different entity. And so I think that, that line that comes downwards is the wrong line. Yeah, the entity most certainly is endorser. So uh, that's that. Exactly. So I would just delete that line <laughs> and deal with stuff in text. Okay. I want to suggest we take the pull request and take the two changes we need to the diagram afterwards. And any text changes, yeah. Yeah. Um, now I think it'll be easier to see the text changes uh, for what's going on. No objection. On. Okay, the line 200 that. is the one that we were just uh, saying. So the paragraph at 200 probably needs to change. Yeah, so that needs to, to change with the change to the inspector. Can you just add, add, annotate a comment in there that that's the paragraph that we need some updates to? I don't know what it should say yet, but this is the paragraph that we expect another pull request. Or what, if we merge this now, this is the main paragraph that another pull request should be touching. <clears throat> there needs to be a paragraph or more on composite evidence. And if that's a term, we need to add it to the vocabulary list. I don't think we want it to be another term, but I'm thinking that, Williams, that, that lines 205 to 211 is the one that's supposed to cover what Ned is talking about. It may need to be updated, but... I think that's the paragraph that it should be done in. That's where it talks about reorganizing the evidence with a new structure and sign the final evidence. The, the, the 208 to 209 phrase, I think, is what's covering that. Okay. But uh, the uh, composite evidence was what I said from memory, and I got it wrong from memory. It was evidence of composite attester. <clears throat> I like the shorter version better. <laughs> If we use that term, we could also define it in line here rather than back in the terminology section, meaning if that term is only ever used in this one section. We'll see what the new text looks like. Uh, there, my comment on 215 is the same as what we were just talking about, about that downward line. As long as we remove the downward line, this is the uh, text and the paragraph that corresponds to that line. Right, the same problem with this text as I had to that line. Okay, so I'd like to merge this and take these points to a new new pull request. Is that acceptable? No objection. Okay. The way you're going to make those changes, make a new pull request. Um, is there somebody who's tasked with uh, or going to put the composite evidence term together? For me, the way I've, I've seen that in the past is that each bit of composite evidence should come from an attester component, which can be verified to come from that attester component. 
because you're going to want to make sure you have signatures from different elements, each one of which can be assembled into some larger structure. So to me, the important part of the composite evidence is that you have subcomponents which can be independently verified. Is that the core of the composite evidence that you're attest or you're able to verify the different sources within the the sum total of the evidence? I think the answer is yes. Yeah, that sounds right to me. <laughs> All right, uh, so I have that definition written up for something else I can provide it in and, and then people can throw darts at it. Oh, sounds great. Okay, so uh, we didn't get to this top one last time, so let's do it first since we um, 40 minutes on the first one. Okay. I don't think there's anything that's outdated if you want to look at the file change view on this one. At least I suspect there's nothing that's listed as outdated on here. You don't need a files changed. Um, well, let's verify nothing listed as outdated when you go down. Um, or I can do that on my screen. I think it's safe to go to that one. Uh, conversation. Let's see outdated anywhere here. Okay. So uh, I'll go to the files okay. changed. Yep. Yes. Files changed, I think. Event replay attacks when it, where an attack replays old evidence in a language that's no longer correct. So here I changed the section title because I agree with Hank's point. And I think the change to the section title actually improves it because Replay prevention is a uh, more accessible term that people might expect to find in an arbitrary document about security. Right. Freshness is a way to. to right. Exactly. And th this is so, Hank, and this is absolutely not what I tried to say. I'm so sorry. Um, if you agree with the section title change, uh, well. Oh, no, no. Exactly. Exactly. I was like, oh, we should. This should be about freshness. <laughs> And then about replay prevention. Sorry for uh, confusing everybody here. Um, I was surprised. You should, you should that it should be about replay pre prevention as the the goal, and freshness is the is part of the content. I think yeah, replay prevention is nice to have a necessary security thing in any scenario ever, and and freshness is the thing that's important to remote station and evidence. I think. Freshness is uh, only important insofar as it does replay prevention. Does it have other, may have other, like, it's like, I think Hank <laughs> made it that the, the replay attack is an attack uh, and the freshness is the desired property, right? Right. It replays. It's when desire, it, why is it desired if it's not for replay prevention? <clears throat> think, think, think in terms of a watchdog. Uh, Scenario where you get peri you know, periodic updates. Um, there's no, they're not. Those aren't considered replays. Uh, the, those are just periodic updates, and the verifier is able to say, "Yes, this was good." You know, a minute ago. Yes, this was good. Two minutes ago. That's the. That's fre freshness is just. Uh, that I, I would put is it, it current. Put it in the terms of the auditor. Auditor doesn't it expects that the replays were were prevented. What he wants to know is was the result fresh? Right. Someone replayed two days ago's uh, uh, att assertion, or okay, it's that the last one was from two days ago, and that's not good enough in a nuclear power plant or something. Yeah, I think that's also a very subtle. Difference, and I, I'm not trying to retro. I will relinquish this point after I say it. There's a subtle difference between freshness and recentness. Sorry, um, yes. but I, uh, I think that yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so freshness in this case is that it, we can prove that at some point it was fresh, and if this point in time is not recent enough, then you need new fresh information. And uh, that you can prove that was fresh at a uh, uh, point that's closer to your time, and and that that's the point. I think. So, what's the takeaway? Do people like the term "freshness" as the section title more than "replay prevention"? 
Is that the takeaway? Uh, I'm yeah, asking specifically about the section title. Which what what should the section title be? I, th I think that the th all those three concepts all need to be dealt with. Having, Go to having the text a for a second, what do you think the title should be? <clears throat> I, uh, I think freshness is an okay title for a section on freshness, and replay prevention is an okay title for a section on replay prevention. And then uh, covering them both in the same section. I think we actually. I think what I'm hearing is we want both. We want both tech titles in both sections. I would, <laughs> I would put replay prevention in the security consideration section. Yeah, I think the means that uh, we use to uh, express freshness uh, satisfy the requirements of replay prevention, and we can highlight that in the security considerations. Okay, maybe that, that way. And that sounds fine. So here. The conclusion is we're going to change the section title back to freshness. And if we have a, a replay prevention section, it would be fairly short because it could refer back to this and that would appear in security considerations. And and then uh, do we need a section on the other concept that was subtle? I forgot the word that Nick used. So, so, so I haven't read the, I'm, I'm a little coming in a little late on the discussion, but I would think but the mechanism used for freshness and the mechanism used for freshness and the mechanism used for re re replay per, per, uh, per prevention would be pretty similar, maybe even the same mechanism. So, I mean, it might... that, that is the goal where freshness is has, is the mechanism and replay prevention, replay prote prevention, whatever, um, refers to that. I think someone said that they're different concepts. I mean, I could uh, freshness is how old it is. Replay is. I mean, I could replay something every microsecond, and I, and I'm still replaying it. So um, for freshness, or I could replay something every three years, and I'm still replaying it. Um, in one, yeah. one case, you got freshness. In one case, you don't. So I think what we decided was it made sense to have a section in security considerations on replay protection, and it would be a short section that would point to the. The freshness section and assert that if you have a freshness that's that if you have done correctly, then it addresses replay protection. I mean, my I'm I'm, I'm I'm suggesting that there's one section called with a title that is re freshness and replay prevention, and it's all addressed there in one place. That was the original question I was asking: is whether people wanted to be in the same section or not? I think. Uh, Ned described what I've heard so far, but because uh, what you just said um, is what I was originally thinking, but I don't feel strongly either way. I'm fine with whatever you agree. So. Saying as well, well, while this is not super important, I think security considerations should be aggregated there, and and having a short part by basically saying the method that is the showing freshness. Or proof of freshness, freshness, sorry, um, um, satisfies replay prevention. It does not, though, re um, prevent relay uh, attacks, but that's another point, I guess. Um, is good with this security conservation. So I would like to have a, this personal point. Um, I would like to have the freshness title only and a very concise point on security conservation text that points to the mechanism highlighted in freshness, saying, you know, basically illustrating how uh, replay prevention is achieved by that. I, yeah, I kind of like that myself. <clears throat> what so, was the other concept that you threw out there, Hank? The other one is the relay attack, uh, that you just uh, steal away uh, evidence from another uh, entity and uh, pretend you are that entity, provide that evidence, and have a uh, claim to be healthy. And you, you even have the evidence about this. This is about uh, attestation uh, provenance. You really have to prove that the entity that sends you the evidence is also the entity that this evidence is about. Um, if it is not uh, able to show that, then you can just uh, uh, basically steal away uh, evidence basically on the way. Men in the middle or something. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe yeah, compromising. Your, there is a subtle difference between freshness and something else. What was the something? Uh, recently. Recently. recency, recency, recency. Yeah. 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 So the the measurement may have been taken, you know, six hours ago, but it's still valid now, and so it's not recent, but it's still fresh. Would that be covered in the freshness section? 
since it's not part of freshness, my my belief would be no. Uh, it, not unless you need to say it's di what it's different from. I, I think there may have been alluded to in a sentence that I put into this section that that, that concept may be there. I don't know if I use the term recent. Uh, I could be wrong. This is because it's from memory. Um, um, there, right there. Stop, 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 stop. Uh, three thirty-eight. Um, when it talks about uh, maybe not or generated. Okay, nope, nope. The, 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 that's not it. You generate the evidence potentially with a non-recent uh, value in it. Is is um, yeah, I don't think it's covered. Not in any of the texts we've seen so far. It doesn't talk about recency. Dave, either. I actually liked your text. I I would restructure it a little bit under the title freshness. Yeah, yeah, that that which is how it originally was, right? So I can change that back. Um, I thought your text was mostly all new, actually, but um. um because originally it was just this section, blah, blah, blah. But maybe you took it out of the other document. The, the only thing that I changed after the very first version that everybody's commented on is the words word freshness changed to replay prevention. And then I add the change section title. If you right. if I change that back, then it's exactly what anybody who reviewed it, Hank, or anybody else has seen. Okay. I've not made any other changes to address other people's comments. I want to have this conversation first to see, is there anything else that needs to be changed before merging? What do you guys want me let's, to do? Let's so. take another cycle on this one then um, and come back to that. Okay. Okay. So let's look at the other pull request, replace measure with collect. Oh, I hate it when my mouse does that. Yeah. This one was the action item that I had last week. Oh, yeah, I read it. Yes, you approved it, and I don't know if anybody else is. Okay. The, the change is not large, so. At least I tried to uh, minimize changes, but still do all the action items. Actually, we reviewed it, but I did not see uh, the review request. Um, I consider this implicitly uh, approved. <laughs> yeah, because we talked about changing the section title, which I did, and we talked about changing the term measure with collect, which I did. So measure no longer appears and collect appears. So I think it's done, but I didn't. I want to know what if you guys think so. So it sounds like we have two approvals. Great. Okay. Uh, and that one, um, uh, Michael, was one that had an issue, so I believe we can close the issue. I wish that was. So I just wanted to look at these two items in the last five minutes we have and see if there's something else we should be. Entity and subentity, the terminology section. Uh, I don't know yet that I like that idea. Um, I'm still thinking, because to, to me, we want terms in the terminology section if they're used in more than one section. If they're used only in a single section, I don't think they need to bubble up to the terminology section. That, that's my usual rule of thumb. I'm pretty sure, if not yet, we will most certainly use it in more than one section because the entity is our uh, co bucket concept where we put roles. I think it's a very uh, um, found, fundamental uh, architectural component, I assume. I reserve I judgment uh, to, to once it starts being used in multiple sections to accept until then. I don't know until I see an example. What are we using in Better. place of entity? What was that? We're not using entity. What are we using? If you look inside uh, William's text, right, he used, uh, you know, lead a tester and whatever else. And so whatever terms that we use here and in the text that uh, I think Eric is writing, I, I said I reserve judgment until I see uh, Eric's text, and uh, we just merged um, the first version of the uh, composite stuff. And so uh, I want terms so, so example think, in there. So, so it, it could be a case where where we could agree to use a term consistently, it would show up more often, but it but without a consensus on that 
consistent term, we make up terms that are that sound right. Uh, but could just as easily have used this the same term over and over again. It's, a, it's sort of a how you write the thing. So, um, Hank, my suggestion to you is to uh, do a run through um, the document and tell us where we would use these terms. Like you could make a pull request with the changes. And so we would understand what it is. I don't even know what the definition of entity would be other than entity is an entity. Is a, it's an empty box, but yeah, that's why I don't like that term. I mean, I understand composite device and uh, the other terms that were in the diagram that we looked at earlier. And so uh, I agree those ones may belong in the terminology if we use them outside that section. Um, and probably we, we might, but um, Oh, sorry. Uh, maybe um, I was of wrong, of wrong impression here. I thought that we uh, that somehow there was agreement, and maybe that was presumptuous. Um, that we uh, that there was once upon a time uh, principal, and then then we changed that to entity to align with the EAT draft, and and we have to define entity in any case then because we are not we, we do not mean persons here, uh, um, and we do I not mean not a, the category. A, I, I was not part of that discussion at the time, and so I am not in the category yeah. of agreement that entity is a term that we need to use in the architecture document. It, it, it but, uh, capital, capital entity. Okay, so uh, so my I summed, okay, then, uh, okay, I, okay, I, I roll this back. We can we can we can judge uh, the, in the future, so to speak, uh, when when text appears, for example, from my pen and Eric that aligns. If not, uh, we will find out what else to use. In any case, uh, this was an attempt to align more with the uh, um, um, uh, thing you aggregate roles on, basically, and uh, and it with eat and make it uh, relatively simple to understand uh, the context between those uh, two different uh, drafts. And and if that is not an agreement, sorry for the presumptuous <laughs> interpretation here. I didn't want to barge ahead with this. Um, um, this is basically from past uh, discussions, I assume. Uh, so that's just a fair vague memory. Um, so in any case, maybe it will align again due to the uh, upcoming pull requests. And then this is fine. In any case, again, entity is defined by, uh, I think it was, what's the, uh, Internet Glossary 4949, I think. And uh, uh, it's everything. You know, it's, it's basically uh, a concept or uh, a deity or, or an organization or a person or a device. And we are talking more on the device side of things here. So it's a little bit of a, bit, a big word for uh, the subset we are talking about, but it would align with each. And uh, so there's that. What's the resolution? I think it's defer. Uh, Hank, yeah, defer. Uh, Hank will check. Hank has an action title now to check uh, now and maybe at least when Eric and Ray Penn's pull requests are in the text. And then I can see if there is more than one use, <laughs> for example, uh, which is again a little bit low bar, I think. Uh, maybe we can raise a little bit. But um, in any case, we need, I think, uh, a concept, the name for the concept where we aggregate molds on. And we couldn't call it bucket as a placeholder. I don't care. Um, the naming is not important. I think the concept is important. So okay. What what was the concept of the naming for? Uh, we define roles, and uh, these roles have to be attached to something. And uh, you could call it a device or a principle or an entity. All of those terms have merit. Um, I'm not married to any of them. Uh, entity would align with it apparently. And uh, so that was my first uh, assumption that would be a, a good way to not disrupt things, but be inclusive. But we can call it whatever we want. It's just the things you put the roles on. But I, I think we're using component and subcomponent in, the, in the, the last set of text that we were looking at. So, so potentially lots of different terms that can be applied. And so the question is, does it make sense to agree on one term and use it consistently? Or is there value in having different, slightly different terms that add some context to the... So the, what was really important for me um, is the terms target and a tester. 
um, when we wrote the eight draft, the first versions of it, and came up with the term eight, we weren't uh, clear, and at least I certainly wasn't clear in my head about the difference between a target and an attester. Um, and uh, now that I, you know, I think that, that term, that term target is a really valuable term. Now that that's kind of coming into kind of use, I mean, I, I, as I work on the eight draft, I'm finding that term target being uh, really useful. And I, I don't think that I've fully integrated it into the eight draft yet. Like, I mean, are these sub modules, sub targets maybe? Um, so that, that to me, the orientation is around target and a tester. Do you anticipate target replacing some uses of the term entity? Probably, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Okay. Or target I don't them. think the term entity in in eat is particularly well defined. I mean, we're getting a lot sharper now with the the term target and a and a tester. Yep, that makes sense to me. So it sound, kind of sounds like lowercase entity is okay, but so are other things. Yeah, maybe. Again, I would like for, for the architecture, what I expect is uh, uh, to have a concept for the things that carry the roles. That is uh, something uh, I heard uh, early on on the list and uh, repeatedly was voiced on the list. So, and I would agree with that. We have never come up with a name that was suitable to everyone. But um, we will find out. It doesn't, have to, it doesn't have to be done now. We can just re, um, defer this, uh, as highlighted. And I can check periodically if, if there is now enough meat to make a consensus call on, is this different enough to have different names, or do we just use one term that eats them all? Sorry. It's fine with me. Okay, um, so do you want to talk about this other terminology claim? Or are we out of time already? We're over time. Yeah. Eric left. Okay, so Ned, maybe make your your point your uh, point next time. Fine. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.